Different accidents, different causes, but all of these accidents do have one thing in common. At some time during the flight, an airplane upset occurred, and there's one other critical thing they have in common. The flight crews did not recover. An airplane is defined as upset if it unintentionally exceeds the parameters normally experienced in line operations or training. Specific values may vary among airplane models, but the following conditions are generally agreed upon. Unintentional pitch attitude greater than 25 degrees nose up. Unintentional pitch attitude greater than 10 degrees nose down. Unintentional bank angle greater than 45 degrees, or even within these parameters, but flying at air speeds inappropriate for the conditions. Airplane upsets do happen, but they are rare. Because of this rarity, a flight crew that finds itself in an upset situation can quickly be overwhelmed. Causes of upsets vary. They may be caused by environmental factors, by component or equipment malfunction, by human factors, or by a combination of any of these. But no matter the cause, the foundation for recovery is the same. You must recognize and confirm the situation, disengage the autopilot and auto throttle, use whatever authority is required of the flight controls, and you must maneuver the airplane to return to normal bank and pitch. Once you've entered an upset condition, you probably won't be able to rely on outside visual references. In many cases, you won't be able to locate the horizon. You must plan on interpreting your instruments. And if you are unsure if an instrument is working, such as your attitude indicator, you must confirm your situation through multiple sources. In fact, that's one of the reasons why redundancy of critical instrumentation is built into an airplane. This video will examine specific recovery techniques that you can use once your airplane has been upset. We've asked three pilots to help us in this discussion. Three pilots who've actually been in some of the situations we'll be looking at. The chief test pilots for Boeing and Airbus have a great deal of expertise when it comes to airplanes that fly outside the normal regime. During flight testing, they regularly push their airplanes beyond normal flight parameters. For the purposes of this training, it doesn't matter how or why the airplane entered an upset situation or what caused it. What matters most is that you understand that your reaction time is limited. In short, if you find yourself in an upset situation, you must act, and you must act quickly and correctly. You must also guard against letting the recovery of one airplane upset lead into a different upset situation. An upset recovery team comprised of representatives from airlines, pilot associations, airplane manufacturers, and government aviation and regulatory agencies developed the techniques presented here. These techniques are not necessarily procedural. Use of both primary and secondary flight controls to affect the recovery from an unusual attitude are discussed. Your air carrier must address procedural application within your own fleet structure. The upset recovery team strongly recommends that your procedures for initial recovery emphasize using primary flight controls, aileron, elevator, and rudder. However, the application of secondary flight controls, stab trim, thrust vector effects, and speed brakes may be considered incrementally to supplement primary flight control inputs after the recovery has been initiated. One more thing. The recovery techniques we'll discuss Assume that the airplane is not stalled. If it is stalled, it is necessary to first recover from the stall condition before initiating these techniques. At this point, we feel it is important to discuss stall recovery. As a pilot, you hear and use a lot of different terminology when discussing stalls. Stall warning, stick shaker, deep stalls, and approach to stalls. These are all used in daily conversation. As we said, in some upset situations, you must first recover from a stall before applying any other recovery actions. Now, what do we mean by that? By stall, we mean an angle of attack beyond the stalling angle. A stall is characterized by any or a combination of the following. Buffeting, which could be heavy. The lack of pitch authority. The lack of roll control. 
inability to arrest descent rate. These characteristics are usually accompanied by a continuous stall warning. A stall must not be confused with a stall warning that occurs before the stall and warns of an approaching stall. You have been trained to recover from an approach to stall, which is not the same as a recovery from a stall. An approach to stall is a controlled flight maneuver. However, a full stall is an out of control condition, but it is recoverable. To recover from the stall, angle of attack must be reduced below the stalling angle. You must apply nose down pitch control and maintain it until you have recovered from the stall. Under certain conditions, on airplanes with underwing mounted engines, you may have to reduce thrust in order to prevent the angle of attack from continuing to increase. Once unstalled, continue with the other recovery actions and reapply thrust as needed. Airplanes that are designed with electronic flight control systems, commonly referred to as fly-by-wire airplanes, have safety features that should preclude the airplane from entering into an upset and assist the pilot in recovery if it becomes necessary. However, when fly-by-wire airplanes are in the degraded flight control mode, the recovery techniques and aerodynamic principles we will discuss are appropriate. Imagine a wings level situation where the airplane pitch attitude is unintentionally more than 25 degrees nose high and increasing. In this case, the airspeed is decreasing rapidly. As the airspeed decreases, the ability to maneuver the airplane also decreases. Recognize and confirm the situation. Start by disengaging the autopilot and auto throttle. Next, apply nose down elevator to achieve a nose down pitch rate. This may require as much as full nose down input. If a sustained column force is required to obtain desired response, you may consider trimming off some of the control force. However, it may be difficult to know how much trim should be used. Therefore, care must be taken to avoid